Hillsong Church Pastor Carl Lentz has baptized Justin Bieber and counts a number of A-list celebrities as some of his church members. But a few weeks ago, Carl tested positive for the coronavirus, and he warned that the fast-spreading illness is so real and almost took him out. He's making a steady recovery, and he told CBN's Wendy Griffith that God will turn his situation around for the church for good. Tell us, you are doing better, right? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege, and I'm doing um, a lot better, feeling like my, myself more and more, and I'm very grateful for that. Carl, when did you realize that you first had the symptoms of the coronavirus? It was the weekend that all of the, the quarantine stuff started to come out. It was on a Monday, and so we had just filmed our church thing on a Thursday night because we tried to stay ahead of what was going to happen. Mm. And so we filmed it, and then throughout that weekend, I felt okay, but on the Monday, I started to feel um, my body just felt funky in, in a way that you know wasn't like a normal thing, and I, I was so achy. Uh, that I knew right away something is up, but I kept taking my temperature and I didn't have a fever at all. Mm. And then after two days of of like these these aches, um, that, was, that was really my major symptom: is these aches and this fatigue. I, I told Laura, I said, I definitely think I have this, and I had to call a friend who knew a friend to get me up to New Rochelle to basically what was an army setup to get this test, and uh, came back positive. So um, wow. I spent the next you know, two and a half weeks just trying to recover, and um, but throughout it trying to somehow we got very lucky i don't know lucky is the right word but one of our camera operators also tested positive so i was able to film two messages for our church right in the middle of all of this because you can't be around anybody that obviously um you know hasn't had this test so it was just me and another sick operator who made our church kind of go for for two weeks i, I look back on those messages and i'm just like god is gracious because i don't remember them i don't know what i said but i know that people were helped hopefully so yeah, it's been a crazy journey, but, um, you know, God's been gracious and, and it is it is um, a blessing to be able to be on this side of it and encourage people who are either scared of this or fighting this that, yeah. um, you know, God, there are people who, who are pushing through this. Well, you are based in New York City where the outbreak has been the yeah. worst. What scriptures encouraged you during this and how have you been encouraging others? I know you said you preached two sermons with the virus, yeah. uh, but how? What, what are your favorite scriptures right now? I'm, I'm, I'm living in and leaning on Jesus. It's saying, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. That's, that's all we have right now. And I think that's what I've been trying to express to our church, that we can't run from this because God's called us to be light in it. Mm. Um, but our hope is in Jesus. And that's not dependent on whether you get a virus or not. It's not dependent on whether you lose your job. And I lost a friend two days ago um, mm. that I love dearly and didn't even know he was sick because you lose contact with people. And he, uh, he had, you know, diabetes and he was struggling with his health anyway. And he passed away and leaves behind two children. And it's one of those things where it just makes no sense. He was in church a month ago. Yeah. And it just, it, it's such a reality call and a reality check for us to look at our faith again mm. and really kind of peel through some of the American Christianity side of our faith, which is just church and, and, and fun and celebration and just stuff that doesn't have a whole lot of challenge. I know everybody's got challenge, but sure. this has really opened up our eyes to really look back in at this relationship with Jesus and go, what is it built on? Is it built on stuff or is this built on the fact that even, even when I get sick, even if I lose my job, even though I don't understand, I still believe this God is faithful. Absolutely. Oh, okay. That'll preach. That's your next sermon. If you haven't already preached that. <laughs> um, well, in most states, churches are considered a non-essential business and are closed. So what has it been like? Well, pastoring in these times, I know there certainly you've probably missed a couple of Sundays because of, um, or weekends because of the coronavirus, but has, what's it like? What's it been like? Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't want to, you know, disparage or cast any shade on what other pastors are doing. But for us, um, we've always said our church is bigger than a building and it's much more than a meeting. So for us, we, we are okay with honoring what the government's asking us to do because I don't feel like anybody is, is threatening our right to worship. Mm. I think what they're trying to do is keep people safe. Huge difference. Nobody's telling us we can't worship and we've just gone online like uh, mm -hmm. most churches in America and beyond have. And it's a classic case of what the devil meant for evil, God's going to use for good. Because I think we can speak for a lot of churches. We're reaching more people than we have. 
and wow. ever. So I think that that's a beautiful silver lining amidst this tragedy is that God will find ways to help us be um, innovative when we have to be, and we're seeing that. So that's what we're doing. We just went online, and we're finding new ways to connect. We're finding new ways to love people, new ways to reach them where they're at. And I'm really proud of our church for, for the stand they've been making in the middle of this. You know, it's, it's pretty powerful. That's amazing. Well, Pastor Carl, we would love it if you would pray right now for our audience. Many follow you online or go to your church in New York City, and many are just finding out about you for the first time. But anyway, we would love if you would pray for us right now. Yeah, thank you again for having me. Uh, Jesus, we love you. We need you right now, desperately. And I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. You are the advocate. You are the one that can lift every weary head listening right now, Lord. You can give peace like nobody else can. So I pray your blessing today. I pray your, pray your protection over your people and help us to remember in the middle of the storm, you're still God. In the middle of the pandemic, you're still the one that brings peace. And it's you we place our trust in. So we speak your name and your grace and your power over the lives of everybody listening. In Jesus' name, 